How's it fix? Dragon's Dogma 2 is in a weird spot where there is a discrepancy between different systems in the game where some have clearly had more work focused on fleshing them out whereas others feel like it's a barely functional skeleton. So I would like to make a little series pointing out details or even entire systems in the game that you may have missed. I have enough on my list to make at least another two videos but feel free to point others out and we shall see how long we can keep this series going. The list isn't in any particular order, but to start us off, I would like to bring up one I only learned very late into my playthrough, and I definitely wished I knew sooner. And that is the ability to soul items from storage. For this to work, you need at least one of the items in your inventory, and you will then have the option to soul from storage. Go to a vendor, select what you want to sell with the sell multiple option. Then, when you confirm that order, you will be taken to this screen. Select change amount and you can sell from your storage by selecting from the column indicated with this little box icon. You will also be able to sell the same item from your pawns inventory as well. However, this doesn't work with the traveling merchants scattered across the map, only the shop owners. But it does work for the old dwarf that is married to the magic archer master, even though the nearest storage is at the volcanic base camp, he is still considered a shop owner. The next system some of you may not be aware of is the search function when looking for resources. For this to work you need a pawn with the forager specialization and you need a piece of gear that still needs to be upgraded. This won't work if all of your gear is fully upgraded. Once you have that sorted out open up the map and select search. Go across to materials. Select the gear piece you want to upgrade and then the different locations where you can harvest those materials for each of the upgrade options will show up on the map. This can also be useful when looking for rare elite monster spawns like the Gore Chimera by highlighting that you are looking for the Black Freakish Mane. Personally, I used this a fair amount by looking for dual hands and foul lords in the endgame. Next, I want to correct some misinformation regarding the specialization terms you can use on your main pawn such as forager, hawker, and logistician, and so on. There seems to be a common misconception that only specific NPCs offer these as rewards after raising your affinity with them. This couldn't be further from the truth, as after digging through the files for a bit, there are over 200 NPCs in the game that offer one of the terms if you increase your affinity with them. I know the names are probably going a bit too fast past the screen, so I will drop a comment below the video with the full list. Next, I want to talk about another mechanic you may not be aware of, and that is the ability to negate fall damage under some specific circumstances. I'm sure you are all aware of it being possible to be caught by your pawns when falling from a large heart, and you can do the same if you are under where they are falling and hold the right trigger or whatever button you use to grab hold of objects. But I actually wanted to bring up two other ways you can negate fall damage. The first, by jumping into these carts filled with hay that you can find outside the thief village below a cliff and in Vernworth by the Roe Chateau and outside the castle walls near one of the ox carts. There are probably easter eggs for Assassin's Creed but we don't really have the, the fancy jump into a haystack animation that's present in that game. The second option is landing on monster bodies. If you fall from a large heart and land on a monster's body you won't take any fall damage which can save some time if you don't feel like climbing down a cliff face. On a vaguely similar vein as the previous point, this one is about being able to catch thrown or falling objects. If say a goblin chucks an explosive barrel at you, it is possible for you to catch it and throw it back if you hold down the grab button while it's flying towards you. Just maybe make sure you're free of the blast zone before throwing it back, unlike myself. And if you have a pawn with a simple personality trait, you could play catch with them by tossing various animals back and forth between the two of you. Which brings me on to my next point. If you had tried my previous tip about reducing fall damage and missed and ended up taking some damage, you could recover some health that doesn't involve using healing magic or any curative potion. For this trick, you need the Ring of Regeneration, which recovers 50 health when defeating a foe. However, you don't need to actually kill anything to get the effect to trigger. 
I was surprised to learn that breaking boxes, pots or even those small stone boulders is enough to trigger the effect and heal you. And the effect does stack if using two rings at the same time. So if you're trying to keep your weight low and don't want to run around with potions, this could be a decent alternative. The next tip should help you if you are feeling overwhelmed or just find fighting wolf packs annoying. You can distract them by dropping a piece of meat on the ground with the discard option in your inventory and then take them all out at once with a strong AoE ability. This also works with gums and walks and sometimes they will completely ignore you attacking them just so they can get to the meat and have a little snack. If you want to gather resources faster, then holding down the button to collect them either from mining nodes, the skeletons or the trash heaps helps to gather it all quicker. Instead of backing away after each attempt, holding down the button lets you do it all at once. So now that you also know how to sell from storage, feel free to be a loot goblin and pick up everything in sight, as I definitely left a lot of resources behind before I knew about the sell from storage trick. You are all probably aware of the pauldrons of the suits of armor in this game disappearing if you have a cape equipped, but did you know there is a similar system that changes the armor depending on the weapon you have equipped? For instance, you could generally keep the big pauldrons and armored gauntlets if you're using something like the daggers or one of the mage staffs equipped, but if you swap to a bow or the spear then the armor changes to reflect the increased range of motion you would need to wield those weapons. I especially like how it swaps with the bow so your arisen can knock and shoot arrows properly with a leather glove instead of the larger metal gauntlet. However, this doesn't happen with all of the suits of armor. For example, the Valiant armor set you can buy from the armorsmith in back battle still has the large clunky gloves when swapping to a bow or spear. And other sets of armor like the Creedbound armor has the chest plate removed when equipping a cloak which gives a better view of your arisen mark when swapping weapons. Which brings me on to my next point, which is about the only ability from the Warfarer vocation, Rearmament. This is the ability that lets you swap weapons between different vocations, and something you may not notice if you are always looking at your arisen from behind or have heavy armor on, is that the mark on your chest glows when you activate the ability. The Creedbound armor is the perfect one to showcase this, as the chest plate covers half the mark that gets activated, but if you remove the chest plate, you can see the whole mark. And a bonus fact is that the English translation for the Japanese version of this class is called the Enlightened Person and not Warfarer. If you learned something new from this video, consider hitting that subscribe button as I have a couple more that I have planned to release in the future. And if you have any other little details you'd like to be known, drop a comment down below. Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Take care. And cheers for now.